this is your weather extreme video for Sunday, February the 28th. Wow, should be ending February, but this year we get an extra February day. Tomorrow will be February 29th. This is a leap year. I'm meteorologist Brian Peters. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll get to our maps. There's the surface high pressure, generally over Tallahassee, Florida, and that is bringing some absolutely spectacular weather to the southeastern U.S. If you liked yesterday, you're going to love today as we warm up a bit. In the upper atmosphere, we have a weak ridge over us, and that is allowing us to uh, warm up nicely with plenty of clear skies. Temperatures across the United States actually are not bad this hour. It's actually very warm as you move up into the central plain states. I see uh, uh, eastern Iowa is in the 50s this morning and uh, no really cold values. The coldest values up in New England, but very few uh, in the uh, in the way of freezing values and our temperatures while yesterday we were basically around 30 degrees their temperatures this morning are basically about oh three to five degrees warmer than that as you can see most of central Alabama generally above freezing although it's still pretty chilly in the northeast part of the state watch warning map this morning features uh, some wind advisories across parts of the central United States otherwise the uh, map is pretty clear of any real significant uh, watches, warnings, or advisories. QPF-wise, the amount of rain expected over the next five days, this is uh, uh, through Friday morning, and it looks like uh, our main threat will come late in the day and evening on Tuesday and into early Wednesday. That'll be our biggest day for uh, having some rain. Storm Prediction Center for day one, that's today through early uh, Monday, has uh, no uh, severe weather uh, outlook, they do show a little bit of thunder over the extreme northwestern United States. For day two, that is uh, Monday into early Tuesday, there's a marginal risk basically over Oklahoma. And then for day three, which is Tuesday into early Wednesday, uh, they have a marginal risk all the way from the uh, Gulf Coast of Texas in a broadband across Louisiana, Arkansas, and the northwest um, quadrant of Alabama into Tennessee and Kentucky. And we'll talk about that when we get closer to it on our GFS uh, summary. And let's get to our 06C GFS model run. And there's the surface high that is moving off the uh, southeast U.S. coast, bringing us some great weather. It looks like we'll see a weak front to uh, Monday as it uh, comes into the area. But as it becomes parallel to the upper flow and uh, it begins to wash out, so we'll see some isolated showers. But... I think most of us stay dry. The upper air pattern, as you can see from Monday, is uh, not conducive to really push the front down into the area very much as the front becomes parallel to the upper flow. On Tuesday, we're now uh, focused on this uh, strong shortwave trough coming out of uh, the central Rockies and out of the central plain states uh, across Oklahoma and the Texas panhandle. And that will be generating a surface low that will move from uh, the uh, Oklahoma Texas border, the Red River Valley area, up into southern Illinois, just to the east of St. Louis by midday on Tuesday, dragging a front down into East Texas. So I think we basically stay uh, dry for the first part of the day. Now, there's a little bit of model uncertainty, and here's a look at the European. The European a little bit stronger and a little uh, faster than the GFS. Uh, a lot of the model discussions indicate that the uh, European's a bit of an outlier as it continues to show uh, rather rapid movements, so we're discounting it for now. As to severe weather, uh, you saw the uh, day three outlook from the Storm Prediction Center, and basically uh, the marginal covers the area where Cape values are going to be the best across the lower Mississippi River Valley. But as the front comes through our area, uh, around uh, midnight, uh, Tuesday night, early Wednesday morning. You can see the Cape values are certainly sufficient for some thunder, uh, but it doesn't look like uh, things are really coming together for any kind of significant severe weather uh, concerns. But because of the model differences and whatever, we basically need to continue to be alert and uh, we'll stay tuned on that one. The trough comes by us on Wednesday, so Wednesday is going to be one of those days, I think, where we'll see temperatures, basically the, the highs in the morning, and then the lows will be later in the evening, and temperatures during the day will probably hold steady or fall, uh, and I suspect uh, through the uh, 50s. By Thursday, 
That trough is gone, but another one is coming quickly on the heels as we see another bit of a closed low and surface trough over Oklahoma, extending down into Texas. And that one also generating a bit of a surface low over uh, the eastern part of Texas. Different than most of our other things. And by the way, the, G uh, the European also showing some uh, model differences there as it shows a, a basically a, a whole state difference. Uh, the uh, GFS uh, over East Texas and the Euro over Memphis. So a pretty big difference as the Euro continues to be much faster than the GFS. By Friday, that trough has moved by and we're coming under a nice ridge and that should bring us high pressure for the weekend. So uh, we'll be paving the way as the chances for precipitation end Friday. We'll see uh, the ridge overhead by Saturday. So once again, looks like next weekend could be a very nice weekend with uh, surface high pressure. Maybe a little bit cool as we see the potential for the wedge forming out. And then by Sunday, uh, we have another surface high over the lower Mississippi River Valley and the southeastern U.S. So once again, looks like a great weekend. And in the upper atmosphere, the flow is basically uh, nearly zonal uh, with only just a slight northwesterly fetch to it as we're coming under a ridge. Now, the GFS continues to be very bullish on the idea of a quite progressive pattern. We start the voodoo period out with some tremendous warmth. Look at that ridge over the eastern half of the country. I mean, that's going to be bringing some warm temperatures well up into the Great Lakes region and especially across the southeastern U.S., um, not sure we'll see record values, but we certainly will see highs that will get up there and p potentially approach records. But after that, the 10th of March, we see a closed low and a, a strong uh, trough over the central U.S. That certainly has the appearance of a potential for severe weather. But don't rest. Two days later, we have a similar pattern with another closed low over Missouri and a trough down into East Texas. And then at the end of the period, around the 14th of March, we have another closed low, this one over eastern Kansas. So the bottom line is it looks like uh, as we get into March, which is typically the start of our severe weather season in the spring, that we're going to be seeing a very progressive pattern with a number of systems parading across uh, one right after the other. That'll do it for the Weather Extreme video for this morning. James Spann should be back with the next edition first thing on uh, Monday morning. In the meantime, don't forget the uh, severe weather storm spotter training that ABC 3340 has planned for areas across central Alabama. I'm meteorologist Brian Peters. Have a great day and Godspeed.